Rooney. My name is Joe Drosendahl, and I'm a geologist, and uh, I teach geology at Phoenix College. Uh, to me, geology, uh, Arizona is this the best place to see and study geology. So today I'm going to take you on a field trip to see different things of geological importance in Arizona. Uh, so if you're ready and all buckled in, we'll get going. You can't talk about Arizona geology or anything about Arizona without first seeing a, a sunset or a sunrise. Uh, the last few mornings, they've been just absolutely gorgeous, almost as good as this one. So Arizona is broken up into three areas, three geological provinces. Down here where we live near you know, Phoenix and down by Tucson, this is called the Basin and Rains province. Um, it's characterized by wide basins separated by ranges. Um, up here near Flagstaff, this is the Colorado Plateau. This part of the Southwest of the United States was lifted up like two or three miles is straight upward. It's just, you know, very high flat line rocks. In between is called the transition zone near Payson and Prescott. Another name for the transition zone is uh, the Central Highlands, where the mountains are a little higher and the valleys are a little more narrow. Starting here in the valley, um, this is Camelback Mountain. You've probably seen this dozens of times. You probably drive by it and see it without even thinking about what it is. Um, there's the hump of the camel and the head of the camel. The hump of the camel is made up of an igneous rock called granite. Um, and at one time, this was a, a, a big magma chamber deep within the earth. After it cooled, it got brought up to the surface and created a mountain. Well, when mountains are, are, are born or created, they instantly start to erode and weather. And around the base of the mound, there piles up this, this big pile of, of sediment. And that's called an alluvial fan. And that's what the head of the camel is. It's just an old alluvial fan. This is Papago Buttes in Tempe. Once again, this material is also an old alluvial fan. These, these, these caves in, in the rocks, those are called dephony. In the, the alluvial fan material, sometimes a boulder pops out and leaves a cavity. When that cavity, uh, moisture can you know, remain a little longer than elsewhere. So the rock around it starts to weather and the, the cavity gets bigger and bigger. There's one place in, in the Papago Buttes that two tifoni kind of ate into the hill on both sides, creating hole in the rock, uh, which is pretty cool. This is the super, Superstition Mountains on the west side of the valley. Um, this is the location of a mega eruption, kind of like you know the eruption that occurs occasionally in Yellowstone, just violent eruptions. Um, all the volcanoes that created this were, were destroyed. Um, and what's left is what creates the Superstition Mountains is this a real thick layer of, of, of volcanic ash. Here's Four Peaks, aptly named. Um, four Peaks, the rock composes the Four Peaks is, is quartzite. Quartzite is a sandstone that's, that's been baked. At one time, there was a layer of sandstone and then a big molten magma chamber came up and inundated the sandstone. And at one time there was like pinnacles of sandstone hanging down into the molten material, kind of like stack to lights in a cave. And the, it, was, it was turned into quartzite. Um, actually, there's an amethyst mine up on top of Four Peaks. Amethyst is a, a purple quartz and it's, 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 it's world-class quality amethyst. There's a shop in Scottsdale if you wanna go see it. This is Picacho Peak on the way to Tucson. It looks like it might be something geological of, of importance in geology, but it really isn't. It's just a remnant piece of rock. What's cool about Picacho Peak in the springtime, there's is one of the best places to go see wildflowers. Plus it's a site in Arizona that is the most Western battle of the Civil War. So it has definitely historical you know, significance. This is Karchner Caverns. It's located south of Tucson, um, near Benson, and it's one of the state's newest state parks. Um, and these are two caves where you can go in for tours. And these are, um, you know, living caves, which means that all these formations are still forming. 
and they're really protective. You have to go through a series of airlocks just to keep the moisture in. Um, they're really huge. This is the big room, and I think this is a person sitting on a rock down here. Um, so if you ever get a chance, definitely go. It's it's it it's mind blowing. This is a Cherokee Mounds in the southeast corner of of Arizona. Um, once again, this is the site of a mega eruption. Um, and all these weird rocks that have been eroded into these weird shapes. Once again, this is just a big, thick layer of volcanic ash. Um, Cherokee Mountains, unfortunately, is so hard, so long to get there from two, um, I mean, Phoenix. Um, it's a great place for wildlife and camping. Um, the few times I've been down there, our campsite was inundated by a family of, of um, raccoons and a family of skunks, um, which is pretty cool. Just don't get near them. Um, it's also a good place to see birds that come up from Mexico. These are the Algodoni Dunes, just um, west of Yuma in California. Um, Hollywood's filmed a lot of uh, movies here, you know, making believe that they're in the Sahara Desert. And you can see the all these sand dunes that are migrating this way um, through Southern California. This is the Pinacate Mountains in Mexico. And those are the ones in the background. And these are, this is an, a volcano. Um, the big crater in the foreground is Elegante Crater. How this formed is at one time there was magma coming up to the surface and it encountered groundwater. Well, groundwater and magma don't mix and there was a huge steam explosion um, and it created this crater. Montezuma's well. It kind of looks like that, that, that crater we were just talking about, but this is um, formed in limestone in the Verde Valley. And with limestone, if there's groundwater, the limestone dissolves for, forming caves. And sometimes the caves get, you know, the roof collapses forming sinkholes. And that's partly the, the, the cause of Montezuma's well. There's a, a, a spring right in the center of it. Um, people used to live here, you know, thousands of years ago. And it's one of the cooler places to visit in, in the Verde Valley. Um, so definitely go there if you get a chance. Tano Natural Bridge. This is another state park. It's located kind of like northwest of, of Payson. And it's said to be the world's largest travertine bridge. Travertine is a sedimentary rock that forms when spring water, which has a lot of minerals in it, the water evaporates, leaving all the minerals behind. And these these deposits of minerals build up into travertine. Uh, for scale, these are people down here. So it's a huge, you know, thing that you can actually walk through. So it's another really cool place to visit when you're near the, in the Payson area. Another place to visit in near Payson is the Paleo site. Um, it's on the road from Payson to Heber. Um, and you see the sign that just says Paleo site and there's a big parking lot. And you can go in, in this, this kind of the surface here, you can find fossils um, that are like 200 million years old. You don't need hammers and anything. You just kind of look through the, the loose soil and you find a whole bunch of different types of shells. And here it has a display of, you know, how it formed. And there's another display over by the trees here on what kind of fossils you can find. So it's a real cool place to go, especially have little kids that are future geologists. This is Fossil Creek. It's also in the Verde Valley. Fossil Creek gets its name not because there's fossils around there. It's because the creek is fed by um, spring water. So it has a lot of minerals in it. Um, so anytime the water gets on any kind of material like, you know, uh, uh, rocks or tree branches or tree roots or a dead squirrel, they get coated with calcium carbonate, make them kind of look like fossils. Um, it's another real cool place um, to go in the summertime. This is the Verde Valley. We are talking about the Verde Valley and the limestone in the Verde Valley. All this material down here in the center of the valley, um, this is limestone. And it formed when there was a huge lake where Verde Valley is now. And it existed for a long time and, you know, lake sediments built up and then the lake disappeared and the lake sediments turned into limestone. Across the, the valley, you can see the the, the Colorado Plateau. And over here is, is where, you know, Sedona exists. This is, take, I actually took this picture from the front porch of the Ghost City Inn in Jerome. 
Um, I'll talk about Jerome in a little bit. Um, and it's, it's my favorite place to stay in Jerome. Down here, this is a cement factory. Um, they actually mine the limestone in the valley to make cement. Um, when we stay at the, the end, instead of thinking of it as a cement factory, which is kind of eh, um, we think of it as a spaceport because it's all lit up at night and it looks like there's going to be a rocket blasting off. This is Sedona. It's just erosional remnants of the edge of the Colorado Plateau, uh, which is a cool place. The Mogollon Rim is, is the edge of the Colorado Plateau, mostly north of Payson. And to me, it's the most best place to ever go camping. I mean, you can set your tent right where the photographer is standing, unless you sleepwalk and you might want to pitch your tent a little further back. Uh, but it has great views. Although you have to be careful because there's rumors of, of, of the Mogollon monster, the, the far cousin of Bigfoot. I've never seen it. I've heard noises, but it usually ended up a guy in the tent next door snoring during the middle of the night. So, But the Mogollon Rim is a really cool place. The San Francisco Peaks, which are north of, of Flagstaff, it's a, it's, a, it's a former volcano. Um, and each one of these Hills isn't a volcano. Altogether, they're a volcano. What happened, oh, about 700,000 years ago, the last eruption, instead of going straight upwards, it went out the side, kind of like Mount St. Helens, and it left a horseshoe ring of peaks. That's what they, why they call them San Francisco peaks. Um, and this is the interior valley um, in between the peaks, and it's a beautiful place to go camping. These are aspen trees, and they're just a blaze in color in the fall. San Francisco Peaks is also noted for something else. It was one of the two places in Arizona that had glaciers in the last ice age. There is a, a glacier coming down from the, the top of the peaks, which is pretty cool. Sunset Crater, this is also located near Flagstaff. It's Arizona's youngest volcano. It only erupted, oh, you know, about 900 years ago, which to you was oh, maybe an hour and 10 minutes ago. Um, it's that new um, and it's a national monument. They have a real cool visitor center and they have you know, different walks where you can see all the different um, volcanic features. Uh, another real good place to go. Lava River Cave. The Lava River Cave is called Lava River because it's a, it's a lava tube. When lava flows go along the surface, the outer part of it cools real quickly, but the inner part might still be molten magma. And sometimes this magma drains back down to through the vent, leaving this long sinuous cave. And that's what the Lava River Cave is. Um, you can actually get down into it and go underground for like three quarters of a mile. Um, it's pretty easy to get to. Um, definitely you need to take, you know, flashlights because it's dark down there, it's a cave. Um, and in the beginning, the it's kind of rough walking because there's a whole bunch of uh, boulders on the floor, but in the back of the cave, you know, the floor of it looks like it, 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 the magma cooled like a month ago. You can actually see ripple marks in the floor of the cave and it's really cool. White Mountains. This is a pretty boring picture, but it's also a former volcano. Um, and, and once again, this is the other site in Arizona that had glaciers in the last ice age. Um, this, occur, this mountain exists over by Springerville, and the White Mountains is actually the headwaters of the Salt River. This is Grand Falls. This is near Flagstaff. And what happened here, this, this river here, that's the Little Colorado. And at one time, there was a lava flow, which is what you're standing on here, that came and blocked the, the canyon. It filled the canyon. So the, the Little Colorado River had to go all the way around the lava flow and came back and spilled down over the edge of the canyon walls. Um, for scale, this is a huge waterfall. For scale, here's a, a vehicle over here. Um, they say it's as high as Niagara Falls back in New York. Um, sometimes it looks like this, other times it's just a raging torrent. Monument Valley, this is in the northeast part of um, Arizona. These are just erosional remnants of the flatline rocks of the, um, the geologic, um, uh, what is it, Colorado Plateau. 
Um, a lot of movies, a lot of Western movies were filmed in this area. Uh, so it's a pretty cool place. Meteor Crater. Um, this, existed, this exists to the west of Flagstaff. And one time they thought it was another one of those craters where there was magma hitting groundwater. But when they studied it, they figured they found out that that's not what it was. It was it's actually a meteor impact crater. It's the world's best preserved, and it's actually privately owned. But they have you know a kick-ass visitor center here, and you can actually walk around the rim. Um, they don't let you walk down into the bottom of it. Uh, but when I was going to ASU to get my master's degree. Um, one of my professors had connections and we were allowed to walk down, which was not easy. And you get to the bottom and you look around and you don't see anything to really see. And you look up and it's like, oh, great. Now we have to walk out. So even if you get a chance to walk to the bottom, it's not worth it. But Meteor Crater is definitely worth seeing. The Painted Desert is also up in the northeast part of the, the, the state. Um, these sediment layers. Um, they have a lot of volcanic ash in them. And volcanic ash has a lot of minerals, which makes all the different colors. And in the morning sun and the afternoon sun, the colors really come out and it looks, it looks like someone came and painted the hills. Related to the, um, um, to the painted desert is the petrified forest, which is nearby, it's near Holbrook. Um, and basically, at one time, there was a force of trees. Some were standing, some were laying down. And this whole area got inundated by volcanic ash. And over time, the, the silica in the volcanic ash and the groundwater replaced all the wood structure with silica, you know, creating petrified wood. And it's really cool. Some, you can actually see what was the, the, what, look, what the bark looked like when the tree was still living or, or soon to be dead. Um, next time you get on campus outside of the, the C building, um, of campus, um, there's a great big piece of petrified wood, the, the college bought, um, that came from whole, the Holbrook area. Um, and it's real cool. You go up and actually touch it. It's like 300 million years old. Shiprock. This is just over the border into New Mexico. Shiprock is a volcanic neck. Um, sometimes the magma coming up through a volcano stops before it erupts and it cools within the neck of the volcano. And then over time, the, um, the rest of the volcano erodes away, just leaving the material that was in the neck. So that's why it's called a volcanic neck. It's called shiprock because from far distance, it looks like one of those real old sailing ships with the big masts and everything, the big sails, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Arizona is known for its mining, mostly, mostly copper, um, and there's a lot of active mines and former mines. Some of the mines were open pit, like this um, open pit near Bisbee. Um, there's also underground mines. Um, uh, Arizona got its start by all the mineral deposits. Um, another former Copper mine is Jerome, which I talked about. Um, the open pit mine is just to the right of um, this, this photograph. Um, and in Jerome, they had underground mines and above ground mines. Um, the mine is closed right now, but I heard rumors that they were thinking about reopening it. Um, to me, Jerome is just a cool place. Um, this big hotel, this big building here used to be a, a, an insane asylum. Now it's the Grand Hotel. Um, and it, 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 everyone claims that all the buildings in Jerome are haunted. Um, I've stayed in Jerome many a time at the Ghost City Inn, which is this building here. And the only time we heard something at night was something coming from the bathroom. And we told the, the lady that runs it and she, oh, that's just a family of skunks that lives beneath your bathroom. So, so we, we haven't seen anything, but we, we hope to. Um, right now, it's kind of like an a artist commune, and it's a cool place to go. Even though Arizona is a, a desert state, there's still a lot of rivers. Um, there's some real major ones. There's four major ones. This is the, the Colorado River that comes down through the Grand Canyon and all the way down to the Pacific Ocean. And then there's the, the Gila River that comes from New Mexico, and it goes down to Yuma, where it joins the Colorado, then there's the Salt River, 
and then the Verde River. And then there's other rivers too. Um, this is the Colorado River. I think this is near the Grand Canyon. And a lot of the rivers are, are, are dammed up to, to, to create uh, electro, hydroelectric power and also to store water. Um, this is Hoover Dam and Lake Mead. This kind of white area, this is the former high water mark of Lake Mead before we started in on this drought, uh, which has been going on for 20 years and might go on for another 20 years. And of course, this is the Grand Canyon, the best place in the world to me. Um, you know, all you can, you know, to a geologist, they can, they can look at these layers of sedimentary rock and each, each layer tells a story of different environments. Um, there's, you know, sediments from deep oceans, from shallow oceans, from tidal flats, from um, beaches to rivers, lava flows, everything, you know. And so a geologist can sit on the edge, well, not sit on the edge, but maybe a little bit out. And if, he, if you're quiet enough, you know, the, the, the canyon actually tells you a story of Arizona, almost like one and a half billion years of Arizona's history is, is, is shown in the canyon walls. Um, if you get to learn how to read the, the rocks in the canyon walls, there's actually evidence of two mountain ranges that were created and just and eroded down to a flat plain that is shown within the canyon walls. Um, it's just the best place to go. Um, you know, the best play, way of seeing it is, is when you actually get down in it and you can either hike or take the mules. Um, but between you and me, the best way of seeing the canyon is from the bottom up. Um, if you ever get a chance to, to raft through the Grand Canyon on the Colorado River, do um, it's the best thing you'll ever do. Through ASU, I was lucky enough to do it three times, and it's just, I, I want to do it again. I just can't get enough of the canyon. So that's our, that's our field trip through Arizona. Hopefully no one got, in, got car sick. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, if you have any, have any questions geology-wise, you know, just contact the, uh, the physical sciences department and you know, also get out on our website. There's a web page for the geology program and there's information on that. So, well, I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day.